Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. Today's another AMA episode. That is, ask me anything. I love to answer your questions, and if you have a question you think is going to be of broad interest, send it in. I'll answer it live on the air. Send your questions to victor at victorjm.com. That's victor at victorjm.com. Well, this question comes from Meg in Westchester, New York. She says, I listen to your podcast regularly. I, I find them thoughtful and provoking and love that you get to the point in a short amount of time. We're residential investors and primarily design and build new single family homes in Westchester, New York. We have a very savvy group of buyers. And with that, one aspect we have come to understand is that our buyers want functionality and flexibility in their homes. We strive to provide designs that accommodate this. I was perplexed on your recent podcast when you were discussing how designers should consider supplying two offices and one bedroom in new apartments as opposed to three bedrooms. Maybe that could be an innovative marketing strategy, but I don't see why you wouldn't want to ensure that all three rooms can be used as a bedroom or an office. With the codes as they are, for a room to be a bedroom, you have to have an egress window or sprinklers, but not so for an office. So why not make sure you have the room set up so they could be used for either? and let the buyer or tenant determine what's best. We often end up choosing at least one bedroom that we label as a bedroom or office to imply this flexibility. It's usually a smaller sized bedroom, but very nice sized office. I was confused by your suggestion and was hoping to hear a bit more from you to clarify. Thank you again for providing such insightful and current information on your podcast. It isn't easy to find helpful real estate information without gimmicks. Well, Meg, thank you for a great question, and I love the Westchester area. My family's originally from New York, and I used to have a cousin who lived on Mamaroneck Boulevard in White Plains. For the listeners at home, the Westchester area is a bedroom community for New York City. There's a lot of professionals who live in Westchester and commute into Manhattan. And Meg, you're correct that the building code has specific requirements for a room that's classified as a bedroom. If you could truly meet all the necessary requirements for both a bedroom and an office, then naturally it would make sense to do so. But designers of a bedroom tend to think about the size of a room required for a bedroom. You need to think about whether it's going to be a single or double bed, where you're going to put the night table, a dresser, maybe a bookcase. They don't generally think about the requirements for an office, and if they do, it's an afterthought. If you are truly designing an office to be used as an office, you'd be paying close attention to how the office would be designed. What style of desks would be used in the room? Would the desk be on a wall or would it be in the middle of the room? Would the desk be facing a window? Where would the door be placed? Where would the filing cabinet, the printer, and the scanner be located? Where would the electrical outlets be located? And the hardwired data connections. If there was a wireless access point in the room, where would it be mounted? If the office was to host regular video conferences, how would the lighting be optimized to provide a good video image, both in the daytime and at night? Would the lighting support a full day of computer work, or would there be glare on the computer screen in the afternoon hours? You see, it's one thing to design a bedroom with a single electrical outlet every 12 feet of linear wall space as required by the electrical code. It's quite another to think through the placement of people and equipment to create a viable workflow. Would the flow be different if the client was using a sit-down desk versus a stand-up desk? It's hard to be all things to all people. And there's a school of thought in marketing that you should focus only on your target market. That doesn't mean you wouldn't accept a sale from someone who's outside your target market. But you'll focus only on your target clients. If you're not convinced about this, I'd like you to imagine that you're at a cocktail party and someone walks up to you and hands you a business card. And on that business card is their name and their title. Now, this person's truly amazing. They're a dentist, a hairstylist, and a real estate lawyer. No matter what you need, whether it's a root canal, a hair trim, or a registering lien on a property, this person has you covered. So think about it. Which one of those skills would you pick? You'd probably pick none of them. Because someone who's trying to be all things to all people ends up being nothing to just about everyone. Would you allow one of the rooms to be used as a bedroom for a six-year-old boy? Well, yes, of course. But you wouldn't design the room for a six-year-old boy unless that six-year-old boy is your target client. If there's going to be a regular video recording, is the laundry room located next to one of the offices and represent a source of potential noise? 
you see there's a lot of three-bedroom homes. There are very few one-bedroom, two-office houses. And the person who needs two offices that are truly designed to be used as offices will pay extra to fulfill that need. Of course, you can use a room for something other than it was originally designed for. For example, the living room in my house is not being used as a living room. It's got a grand piano, a drum set, two guitars, and a bass guitar. It's our music room. But that doesn't mean it was optimally designed to be a music room. The idea behind my previous podcast episode was to get listeners thinking about design, not just a marketing gimmick, to focus on the design with your target client in mind. I want to thank you, Meg, for a great question. And for the listeners at home, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.